What's up, boys? We made it. I'm not going to lie. I did not think that we were going to make that. <laughs> well, I was having all kind of issues with YouTube tonight, but that does not matter. What matters is that we are live. We are ready to go. We're going to do a film breakdown. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if everything make sure everything sounds okay. I, I had to reset my entire like streaming service. So if the mic doesn't sound right or something doesn't sound right, let me know. Um, I could I could probably fix it, but I'm not sure. This is going to be a film breakdown. We haven't done a film breakdown in a while, uh, like a legit one. Last time we did get a little in trouble with YouTube a little bit, but uh, not a big deal. If the stream gets shut down, we'll just pop back up. You know how it goes. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Make sure to follow the Twitter, the Instagram. I've been posting Instagram stories now. All right, I've been on live. I've been on that Instagram. All right, so make sure you're there, man. Shout out to everyone that's here in the chat. Uh, a sharpshooter, first one in here. DJM says Jason Sun. Charlie Boy says hello, gentlemen. White Ox says what's good. What's good is that we are here doing a live show. Uh, we got a Bronco suck in the chat. Yeah, I mean they haven't scored yet on my end which is good for me. I might have put a little wager on uh, the Browns winning by one point. Jags Fan Cave says, very excited for this. I'm out of the dinner right now, so we'll have to catch up on the replay. Go Jags and stay awesome, Jason. Thank you, Jags Fan Cave. I hope you enjoy your dinner. Hopefully you're on a nice dinner date or with some buddies. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, Robert Adsert, so you now... So did you n know the cornerback 21 during the game on the interception? I was like, who's that? Yeah, that was the guy we picked up from the uh, uh, Vegas Raiders. Yeah, so um, he actually had a decent game for sure. No YouTube jails? <laughs> Why is your stream always saying start and then three minutes later? I don't know. Just kidding. What's up, United? Hey, it's uh, I like to do a little intro. I like to get the, the chat going. Uh, I got a good a good local band here I like to play before now. I'm Jags fans, Strain Anchors. Make sure to check them out. But, you know, without further ado, I mean, I think it is absolute time to just pull in some... Uh, let's see what we want to do here. I actually don't know what we want to do. Let's go... Um, let's start with a nice and easy Agnew screen, okay? Look, I'm big on, on Agnew. I think he was just an outstanding player. Um, I'm glad to see him getting uh, the reps that he deserves. Um, and I'm glad that he's getting into the offense. Like before he got here, he was, I mean, when we signed him, everyone was like kick returner, right? Guy that's just going to be here. Guy that's just going to return kicks. People like were hesitant to even give him a roster spot in the preseason and training camp. We're talking about all the good receivers that we have on this roster. And do we even have room for Agnew? Oh boy, were we wrong. So here we're going to line up. In our shotgun formation. I mean, this is just 10 personnel. It's R5 versus U5. If you bring a blitz on our offensive lineman, we're going to have to get rid of the ball quick, right? Trevor knows this. We got trips out to the right. The motion by Agnew and Chen the motion by Chenault coming in, this is already a good play call by Bevel. I mean, we're looking at a trips bunch here against two defensive back, um, a safety that's walked down in the middle of the field. I mean, you got numbers here. I don't know if there was a check in this play. I don't know if he checked pre-snap, but good play call here. So instantly you see here, we're at an advantage here now. All right, we have a 2v2 out in this situation. Um, the backside blitz here is, is pretty much preoccupied. The safety is going to have to come downhill. So basically we have what we want. We have two blocks here that are, that are pretty good. And then we got Agnew in space one-on-one. -on -one. Great call. Great job of hitting the seam. I mean, I mean, I love that call. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful to me. Um, I have all a bunch of offensive plays queued up, and I have a bunch of uh, defensive plays queued up. But I don't want to get in trouble, so I got to keep an eye on things. Again, if we get shut down, whatever. Who cares? Uh, I don't know. But, but let's go to a let's go to a Trevor throw. Okay. All right. Um, look, I, I'll tell you time and time again that I'm just the biggest Trevor Lawrence fan in the world. The day we drafted him, I was pretty excited about what was going to happen here. Um, one of the things I actually mentioned on Twitter the other day was Trevor Lawrence's ability to sense pressure is, is elite. It's starting to pick up steam now, right? That that notion of him uh, is uh, picking, uh, being having the pocket awareness. I was reading this book that just came out. Seth Wickerman wrote a book about um, 
about the the Patriots and Tom Brady and Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick. It's called Now I Can Die in Peace. And one of the things that he talks about is that um, the Tom Brady has this natural sense of pressure that he hasn't seen since Joe Montana. And you kind of see that with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, this play kind of really stands out here for that for sure. Let me make sure y'all can see what's going on here. Okay, cool. All right. So, again, Trevor thrives in the shotgun here, right? We're going to line them up pre-snap and shotgun. you got a tight end attached, so we'll call this 11 personnel. Um, a tight formation. Dolphins are going to walk down. I mean, they show cover two pre-snap. I don't, I don't know what this guy's going to do. This guy looks like he's about to semi-bail. Looks like it could be a cover two. All right, so this is just a straight cover two, which is fine, right? But the the, the good thing here is, like, watch – Trevor, like, kind of knows his protection scheme, right? He knows Robinson's is going to kick right. He knows that if there's going to be a weakness, it's going to be coming off this edge here, and he senses it immediately, right? Like, your average quarterback senses this, maybe moves to the right, maybe gets rid of the ball, maybe does something crazy like that. Watch what Trevor does when he senses this pressure coming from the left side. Got him. <laughs> like, like, that's it, and it creates time. I think the I think the ball got dropped. I think Lavisca actually dropped to this one, and then he dropped the next pass too. Okay, this sequence Lavisca was targeted like I think five plays in a row. I am not kidding you. He caught three of them, out of, but spins out to his left side. I mean, that's one thing I always talk about is Trevor rolling out to the left side. He's just as accurate as he is rolling out to the right, which is absolutely amazing. This is going to stem his route inside. He's going to realize that Trevor's going back out. He's going to improv. Got to catch that ball though. Got to catch that ball. All right, we got to get back in just so we don't get into YouTube jail here. We'll be back with more film, though, in, quite, in one second. If this is your first time watching with us, make sure you go back and watch the party episode. I know you guys saw the party episode. It was a lot of fun. We definitely <laughs> had a lot of fun. Uh, those, are, those are my favorite types. Look, I'm all about party episodes. If we can do party episodes, I'll do them every single week. I got the hat. I got the balloons. Like I got the whistles that don't work. That's it, man. That's it. Uh, let's see here. Moon Illusion says, hello, hello, hello. And he says, who handcocked your shirt? Handcocked your shirt. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a uh, like a men's clothing store here. In, in, it's actually in Atlantic Beach, which is like just north of Jacksonville Beach. Uh, I'm a beach guy. I'm a beach guy. Uh, Philip Butcher says, hit them highlights, bro. Uh, okay. All right. Hey, hey, I got a bunch queued up. As long as this stream stays live, bro, this might be a two-hour episode. I don't care. I'm here to... Luke, I don't care. I'm here to break down some film. Let's do it. Tuggernut says, it seems like every time Agnew touches the ball, he makes a big play. I agree. Robert answered, it's so nice knowing we have a franchise quarterback unlike the Dolphins until they get Watson. Uh, yeah, see, that's the problem is, like, the Jaguars should have been out of that game quickly. The first half, the Jags did not play well. Um, the Dolphins could have ran away with that thing early. The Dolphins are not good. I mean, not converting on that fourth down at the end of the game. I mean, that's bad. I mean, they just, they're not a good team either. So, two bad teams, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm rooting for the Jags to get some wins. I make no, no bones about it. I don't think this roster is incredibly talented, which is fine. They won one game last year. and But um, a good team might have put us away on Sunday. But hey, I'll take it. I'll take it where I can get it for sure. Uh, DJM says, I want Watson to go to Carolina. Silver 64209 says his poise is elite. It is. I agree. My eyes itching like crazy. Moon Illusions put that defender on skates. <laughs> DJM says Jason Sod was tipsy that episode. Hey man, come on. Uh, maybe. Hey, we're celebrating. We're celebrating good times. Come on. On that spin out, if the line holds, it's an easy completion to Lavisca. No, I mean I'm with you, man. I'm with you. All right, let's go to some more film here. You know what? Let's just keep it Trevor-centered. We'll get to some defense here in a second, I promise. All right, so here we're going to have Trevor lined up under center. That's a pretty rare sight for him throwing the ball anyways, right? So the Jags are going to come out in their heavy package. I mean, they got two wide receivers. I mean, this is heavy for them. Two split out to the left. Uh, they have a tight end. Two tight ends. Okay, they got two tight ends, ace formation. Dolphins are going to be loading the box, still in that too high look. Let's see if they rotate at the snap. Nope, they're going to stay in too high. Look, Trevor did a great job with the play action all game. I mean, the thing about James Robinson, you know, rushing for 100 yards or whatever it was, 80 yards, whatever it was, the thing about that is, like, it makes defenders have to cover him. 
So you can run this type of play. You can run Trevor. Just I mean, this defensive end crashes so hard. I mean, so I mean, what a great play call here. And then Trevor's athleticism. I mean, that's an athletic looking quarterback there. Picks up the first down. I mean, that's a rare attribute. I love how the defense blocks it up. Man Hurts realizes early that he's not going to get the ball, even though he might have been designed here. Uh, decent route there by Farrell, covered up, but because of that, Trevor's able to run. Just overall, decent play. All right, let's get to some defense. Oh, I know you guys like – okay, I know you guys like Dewey, right? I know you guys like my boy Dewey Wingard. <laughs> 42. For all the hate that Dewey gets, I had to, I had to bring up the end zone film here, okay? Um, I like this. I like how they have Malcolm Brown in that shade technique. Malcolm Brown had him a game, bro. I mean, I got I got some Malcolm Brown plays in here. They got Malcolm Brown in that shade outside of the center. Um, another guy hand in the dirt. I mean, you only got two guys with hands in the dirt, and his hands barely in the dirt. That's what I like to see. Uh, Allen's gonna hold his guy, but look at your boy Dewey Wingard, just shooting the gap. This tight end has no shot at blocking your boy Dewey. No shot at Dewey. Get in there, hitting the B gap, getting that tackle for loss. Yeah, right. Try cutting back on that. Don't send a tight end at my boy, Dewey Wingard. Come on, bro. You know better than that. You know way better than that. Uh, out of many one says the Finns' mediocrity curse continues. All right. DJM says, is Agnew better than Chark? Well, right now he is because he's available. Um, I like Agnew. Look, I like him. Give him some volume. Let's see what he can handle. Why not? I mean, we have no other option. We have literally no other option. So, I mean, we're going to see what he can do with it. Moon Illusion says, Chark is the better receiver for sure, but Agnew is the better playmaker. Okay, I'll take that. Tuggernut says, it seems like every time Agnew... Yep, I got that one. Um, Robert Atcher said, it's so nice knowing we have a franchise quarterback like the Dolphins until they get Watson. Am I, am I behind here? Okay. Uh, I'm way behind here. Sorry, guys. Jeff Singer says, on that spin out, I need to. <laughs> you and you, <laughs> DJ Ham says, are you and UCF going to Seattle? Uh, I don't think I'm going to make that trip. Uh, I have a work event that, sat that Friday. So it was going to be hard for me to fly out Saturday and get there. That combined with the fact that Florida Georgia is that Saturday, and I really enjoy going to Florida Georgia. Um, not the necessarily that I'm the biggest Florida fan in the world, but like it's it's a lot of fun. If you've never been to the Florida Georgia, it's it's insane. Um, so yeah, Moon Illusion says, "Holy moly, he's fast for his size." Yeah, he did. Yeah, he is. DJM says, "Man, T Law is faster than our tight ends." <laughs> That's true. Josh Carter says, "I made it to the made it live to the show." Josh, thank you, thank you for making it. We are going uh, into some film breakdown. I'm just breaking it up to to make sure YouTube doesn't. Cut us off. It doesn't seem like they have any problem with us right now, but you never know, man. There you never know. Moon Illusion says Gesicki is a very animated guy. LOL. Yes, I really liked Gesicki until that game. Now I kind of don't really like him that much. He was kind of annoying. I mean, animated is a, a very nice word, and that's very nice of you, Moon. But uh, I found myself annoyed at him. Like uh, the LeBron wanted the LeBron treatment. Hey, Mike Gesicki, I have I have some. Some bad news for you. You're not quite at the LeBron level. You're not quite at the Brady level. You can't cry every time that something doesn't go your way. Tallahassee says, so far, I like Dan Arnold, but those drops. Yeah, I mean, LaVisca had drops. Arnold had drops. I mean, that drop on that slant route hurt uh, going into the end zone from Arnold. But Trevor does throw a rope, to be fair. I mean, he throws a rope. And, I mean, some receivers just aren't used to it. I mean, receivers talk about it all the time. When you go to a quarterback that has a lot of velocity on the ball, it's, it's a change. It's, a, it's just like a lefty, like Tua, lefty. The ball spins the other direction. When you're used to doing something, your muscle memory is the same every single time. It's, uh, it's, it's difficult when something like that changes. And when you go from having, like, you know, quarterbacks that throw a certain velocity and then Trevor's, like, roping the ball, it's different, I'm telling you. Silver64209 says, I want to trade for a wide receiver. Odell Beckham Jr., Mike Thomas could be a good investment for Trevor. I don't think you'll have to trade for a guy like Michael Thomas. I think he'll be a free agent. Um, it, did Chris Godwin get locked up in Tampa? Isn't he going to be a free agent? Is Cooper Cup going to be a free agent? There's some good guys coming out, and I know some of them will probably re-sign, but um, Allen Robinson, I mean, there's some guys out there that if you really want to give them some help, I talked the last episode on the party episode. Make sure to go back and watch. Party episodes, I mean, I love party episodes, man. Those were so much fun. 
You guys that were here, you know. If you didn't watch the party episode, it's worth it. Go back and watch it. But I said in the party episode, look, give Trevor all the receivers. Why not just stack them up? You know a couple are going to get hurt. You know, you know, just get them. Get them all, and, and it'll be good. After it says, Agnew has the best hands of all of our wide receivers. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Silver says, Allen Robinson. Yep. DJM, was that fourth down play that got us game winner? I thought Josh Allen played a part in that fourth down stop. You know, that is a good transition, DJM. Let me see if I can find that. Wait, hold, please. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, I believe this is the fourth down. And I think what stood out to me the most about this play is I thought it was just Josh Allen, but like I'm pretty sure Damian Wilson was in there too. I don't think this was the play because they were in shotgun. Nope, that's not the play. Sorry, boys. There we go. Here's the play. All right. So this is the fourth down. They're in shotgun. Um, this is pretty much if they get this, they're still driving. I mean, this is probably one of the biggest plays of the game. I mean, outside of the kick from uh, right, I mean, this is probably it right here. So the Dolphins are lined up in like a semi-heavy personnel. I mean, they have a tight end on the line of scrimmage, and then they have another tight end here. The Jaguars walk down. Rayshon Jenkins to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Nevin Lawson's walked down here. Um, Russell, I forget his first name, is is lined up here, just like stacked on the nose. Uh, Damian Wilson is outside here, outside shoulder, and then Smoot out here. Uh, Josh Allen's going to be the key guy to watch here. Again, hand not in the dirt. Uh, low position, though, starting out with leverage. At the snap, I mean, it's his lateral movement at the snap that just absolutely makes his play. I mean, watch how quickly he gets lateral. I mean, he's definitely faster than this tight end here. You, I mean, you can't put a tight end on Josh Allen on fourth and one. That's just stupid. That is just absolute stupidity to think that a tight end will be able to stop Josh Allen there. I mean, that's the thing that sets Josh Allen apart from all of our D linemen is he does have the athleticism to do stuff like this. I mean, keeping your outside shoulder free is literally his only job here, and he does it. Not only does he, he locates the ball carrier, um, Malcolm Brown does a good job there holding up two blocks. Smoot does a good job turning it back in. I mean, this was just like, look, for, for everything that we – lost for not having pass rush i think we've made up in run stopping can you imagine this team last year there's no shot that we make this stop last year absolutely no stop i mean we were just like the doormat of the nfl getting ran on last year and to to see a guy like like smoot like mulusion says Josh Allen making a play. Malcolm Brown holding up two guys at the line of scrimmage. I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Look, you can do a lot if you can stop the run in this league. It's a passing league, but if you can't stop the run, you will not win. And that's just the rule right now. It is what it is. I love to see it. I love to see the defensive playing like this. I love the, the how we attack at the ball. I have an – attacking the ball – let me show you this one here. I, I know we're on a we're on a defensive kick right now, and, and I have a bunch for Trevor. Okay, don't get me wrong, but if, for those of you that have watched the Jags for a long time, like when do you ever remember seeing the Jags defense attack the ball like they do here? Okay, so here we're staying. Like Dewey's gonna roll into this cover one. It looks like they're playing man here. Could be a cover three. I mean, they could be playing thirds, but cover one, cover three turns into cover one post snap if that's your only responsibility. So I mean, this guy, I mean, he knows he's manned up here. I mean, maybe if he's playing cover three, he has to watch the two and pattern match. I, I don't know, maybe. But at the snap, they're just going to release it out of the running back. Okay, so in the past, this ball would get thrown out to the running back. The running back would pick up like 10 yards easily. He's going to get the ball. I mean, look at this. I know he bobbles the ball, but look at this. I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven black jerseys. No, sir. I mean, look at this. This is Urban right here. This is look, Urban is seeing what I'm seeing. He look, he sees all those black jerseys attacking the ball. He's like, whoa, 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 chill, chill. Look, you want your coach to have to tell your team to chill. I mean, you got the whole team. I mean, I'm kind of mad at some of these guys that didn't go. Like, go, Dewey. Like, go. Get to the ball. Like, I, look, I'm just pumped to see this. You you never see this attack. All these guys chase. I mean, 
that just brought joy to my heart. It wasn't even like I got great of a play. It was just like, <laughs> it's just like for once in my life, I got to see the Jags defense attack the ball. I mean, defense does do, does these drills in practice where all 11 guys have to get to the ball. But it's been a couple years since I've been able to see it. Brandon Latouche, what do you think we should try to trade for an, an offense and defense? I don't think we should trade for an offense or defense. I mean, if we find ourselves in a position next year where we have a potential shot at making a run to the playoffs, yeah, I trade for some guys. I don't think we're in that position right now. I mean, I think we have the luxury of drafting players. The cap room we have affords us the luxury of signing high-end free agents. Like, if you really, really wanted to, you could you could go out there and sign both Allen Robinson and Michael Thomas. You would have a lot of your money tied up in the receiver room, but do you care? I don't care. I don't care. I mean, the, the Chiefs have been doing that for years. Tie up all your money in the offense. I don't care. You could do that. I don't necessarily think you need to trade assets like immediately. Try to draft a guy. Try to get a guy in the first round that can help. I mean, there's no telling. There's no telling what's going to – I mean, I don't know where the Jags are going to pick. That's going to be a big factor in it as well. I mean, if they are picking like later in the draft, that would that would mean that Trevor's played well, and that would mean that free agents probably want to come here and play for a guy like Trevor who's – look, you can say whatever you want. I know there's been like a couple reports of Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence today. Anyone that watches Trevor Lawrence knows that he's a good player. DJM says, uh, for real, Ob Odell Beckham Jr. is getting zero points on my fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, well, isn't uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, what's his name? Uh, Baker being out doesn't help. Uh, I, mean, I feel like I'm the only one that doesn't want OBJ. He had, like, one huge catch and has been just okay ever since. I think he's a good player. He's been in a bad situation. He's been injured. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, Chappelle. Chappelle Russell. Thank you, Moon Illusions. I, I, I knew it was in there somewhere, but you're right. Thank you, thank you. Moon Illusions, it looks like Smoot got him there, too. Yeah, Smoot's a good player. Uh, DJM says, Henry spanked the Bills. Henry spanks everybody, man. Timmy Devil 999 what's up, Timmy? He says, we need a pass rush. We do need a pass rush, and I think that might be our top priority. I mean, if we continue on this trend of wins and losses, which I don't think will happen, but if we do, Kayvon Thibodeau, I think that's who they would pick. And I, th I, think, I think they pick him over an offensive lineman. I mean, God knows what's happened with Cam Robinson. And I thought Cam Robinson played a great game. Um, but that might hurt our chances of re-signing him because I think if he plays well this year, he probably will test his, you know, worth on the free agency. Hopefully Walker Little can go, I guess. Moon Illusion says the transition from Wash to Cullen is night and day. It does seem like Cullen's getting more out of these guys than Wash was because it's it's essentially the same level players, right? I mean, like, different faces. Tip, I mean, essentially the same level player. I mean, I would say the linebackers are, were, are worse. The secondary is worse. The D-line is worse. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what advantage Cullen has. I mean, Josh Allen. I mean, Kalevon's coming into it a little bit. I don't know. CJ DSO, draft an offense, sign a defense. Okay. And, look, that strategy might be – that might be okay. DJM, are we going to be successful defensively against the Seahawks? I'm not necessarily scared of Geno Smith. I mean, DK Metcalf will probably get his, but if there's one thing that we've learned from these opposing teams, is like the player can pop off and they can still lose. Uh, it's going to come down to can our offense score? I mean, our defense held the uh, Dolphins at 20 points. I mean, that's that's pretty not realistic for most NFL teams, I think, especially with this defense. So the offense is going to have to score more points. I think the offense could have done a better job. I think they kicked a lot of field goals when they could have scored. I think they, you know, didn't convert fourth downs. I mean, we had a, a Trevor fumbled, you know. I mean, there's things that we could have done um, to make the offense a little bit better, too, in my opinion. Astrid said, um, you're not worried about the Dolphins getting over 400 yards. Uh, no, I mean, Tua threw for more yards than Trevor. Didn't seem like he did anything. Jeff Singer, the Keyshawn take sucks. He has no idea how to evaluate a quarterback. I mean, it helps that Dan Orlovsky was on that same show telling him he was an idiot. If there's two guys and I have to kind of determine whose take I want to believe when talking about quarterbacks and you give me a former NFL quarterback and a guy like Keyshawn Johnson, I'm going to side with Dan Orlovsky 
10 times out of 10. Moon Illusion. I saw someone ranked Trevor 30th amongst quarterbacks. Ugh. That's not accurate. Jesus is King. What up, Jesus King? He says, do we beat Seattle next week? I think if Seattle were playing here, I'd feel pretty confident about saying the Jags would win. But the fact that we have to take a West Coast trip over to Seattle and play in Seattle makes me a little bit weary. I mean, I just I just don't know. I could see the Jags putting up a stinker as the problem. I think if the Jags play like they can, I think they win. But will they? Uh, that's the ultimate question. Yeah, I'm not sure. DJM, am I the only one who thinks Colin looks like a penguin? <laughs> We're about to find out. Let's see. Let's see what uh let's see what everyone else says here. Images. That's an article. A penguin or the penguin? I can see the penguin there. I I can, I can see a little penguin there. Yeah, no doubt about that at all. No doubt. All right, let's stick with the defense, right? Only because I really like this play. I mean, I love big boy defensive line play. I don't know why. I just always have. Like, I never physically would be able to do this, so it just really impresses me. Malcolm Brown here. Like, one thing you have to be able to do when you're a defensive lineman in a 3-4 technique is what's called two-gap, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You're responsible for two gaps. Like, you got to take on a double team. If they run the ball to the A-gap or the B-gap, or in this case, the B-gap or the C-gap, then you have to make sure that they don't push the line of scrimmage there. It's a very difficult thing to do because you have offensive linemen that are trying to push you off that space. You have to be very strong. You have to be very big. You have to be very aggressive. Malcolm Brown is all three of those things. Watch him here. Okay, he's going to be pretty much head up on the tackle here. That's fine. Not usually where you see someone two gap, which is cool. I mean, I believe they call this an, uh, an over front. So he's going to be, the Dolphins are going to be in their pist in pistol, which they didn't have much success in pistol. But you can see all the offensive linemen are going to stunt. All right. So the fact that Malcolm Brown can take on this double team and not get pushed off the line of scrimmage is what makes this play. So watch big number 90 right here. Double team? Nope. Outside shoulder free? Nope. I'll take all of that. I will take all of that, says Malcolm Brown. Like, this is what we were missing last year. This is why teams ran for 200 yards. We did not have a big boy that could take on two blocks at the same time, move laterally with the offensive lineman, and make a tackle at the line of scrimmage. This is beautiful to me. And if we look across the line and what everyone else is doing, like, they did pretty decent here. This backside's pretty atrocious here from Gotsis, But that's okay. I mean, he was quick off the snap. I mean, the corner seals the edge there. I mean, I don't know, man. This defense is just like a willing tackling defense, and that's something that you don't see all the time here. Let's give James Robinson a little love. How about that? All right, so here, I mean, James Robinson's had a great <laughs> – the penguin for sure. <laughs> We're going to start calling him the penguin. Sounds good. All right, so here the Jaguars are going to line up in like a heavy formation. Look, I'm all about heavy – Run the ball, man. I'll run the ball. So we got man hurts here. This looks like 89. Looks like Farrell here. And then the Jags are going to be lined up in single back. Look, for all the crap I give Will Richardson, not bad. Not bad. Especially from a guy that hasn't played a lot of guard. I mean, this is pretty good movement here from Will Richardson. I mean, to ask a, a guard to come across the formation and block an outside linebacker and to seal the edge... You gotta have a lot of faith in this guy. And 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 I've said a lot of things about Will Richardson, but this I had to put this in here because I have to I can admit when I when someone is showing me something that I haven't seen. I can admit when I'm wrong. Will Richardson has some pretty good footwork here. I mean, he shoots across the line, finds his blocking assignment. Farrell does the same thing. Great play call. I mean, great play call. I mean, this is a counter. They're gonna you see the little delay that James Robinson does? Right, So this is designed to try to freeze the linebackers to make them think they're going to the defense's left. And you'll see 55 even takes a little false step to the left. That false step is the difference between this gap being open and this gap not being open. Two great pull blocks here by Richardson and Farrell. That gap's going to open up. J-Rob's going to have to do a little bit of dancing here because Farrell's not the biggest guy in the world. Gets skinny. Hits the hole. Gets upfield. I mean, that's James Robinson. 
I mean, yeah, it was it was blocked up good. I mean, and that's why I got to give credit where credit's due. Down block here. I mean, that's that's it. Robinson makes a move. Look, man, running the ball. This team has been running the ball for sure. Um, I'm backed up on comments. This is what usually happens on these film breakdown episodes. So again, like I always say, if it's a good comment, just type it again. And no one cares. I promise you, uh, DJM will not yell at you, okay? Even though he wants to. Uh, let's see here. Tuggernut. I don't think we have anybody who can contain DK Metcalf. <laughs> I don't think so either, but that's fine. We have no one that can contain any star player on defense. Maybe uh, Miles Jack will be back with an extra week off. Uh, DJM from Batman. <laughs> Penguin from Batman. Uh, it's Dervo. Says Jaguars United. What if Trevor has a career day against Seattle? I can see it happening. For sure. I think every week Trevor plays, he's going to get better. But I'm a big Trevor fan, and I'm a big Trevor fanboy, and I partied hard when the Jets beat the Rams, and I partied hard when Trevor got his first win. Because that's what we do around here! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Moon Illusion says, Tug uh, talking to Tugger Nut, Metcalf, Lockett, and Everett will be hard to defend, especially with our secondary and linebackers. But here's the good news. If our front seven continues to play the way that they are, which has been completely impressive to me, then we could potentially get these guys behind the sticks, get them in the third and medium and a third and long, and that's when the defense can thrive. That's when the pressure can get there. Look, your boy Neville Lawson got an interception last week. Dewey was close to one, close to some sacks, man. I don't know, man. I, I, I think the fact that we, stop, we can stop the run is going to help us. It's going to help us. Moon says, I like the linemen and tight ends running up to help push J-Rob in. Yes. Yeah, it's a good point. Murtaza Zadi, and forgive me if I, if I butchered it. He says, they may ban the live stream again. Minimize the screen. <laughs> I'm trying to balance it. Hey, I think we're good so far. I don't know. Junior Jags Press. What up, Junior? Says, I know it's still early, but man, if the Jaguars sign Devontae Adams in free agency, I'm going to be hype. Okay, so that's the guy I can, like, see the least signing here. And that probably means that he will. And that probably means that he'll be here next year. But for some reason, that just Allen Robinson and Michael Thomas, they just seem like more realistic candidates. They seem unhappy with their team. Devontae just seems like a guy that's going to go where Aaron Rodgers goes. You know what I mean? He's like, If Aaron Rodgers stays, I feel like he's going to stay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Robert Etcher says, I love the film. Oh, we're getting... Oh, dude, I have so much film lo loaded up. Like, we, we haven't even begun, Robert. Moon Illusions... Uh, or Timmy says, re-sign Cam Robinson. I think the Jags would like to sign Cam Robinson, and I think they have a plan in place for him. That being said, the trade deadline is coming up. I think it's the first week of November. So if they're going to trade him... It's going to be soon. I would hate for it. I would, I would like him to resign. I just if, if I'm Cam Robinson and I'm Cam Robinson's agent and Cam Robinson's camp, I'm probably advising him to hit the open market. Yeah, you're rolling the dice. You're going to stay healthy this year. But a guy like Cam Robinson is going to demand a lot of money in free agency, man. Teams pay top dollar for capable left tackles. They do. They do. And we've seen him, and we've seen his ups and his downs, but other teams are going to see his PFF grades. They're going to see the highlights of him, and they're going to overpay for him. So, And that's how free agency works. Um, so he's a guy you have to weigh is, are you willing to overpay for him? And I think most fans would say no, but i, I got to give him credit, man. The guy's played really well the last couple weeks. Uh, Oat Max, what up, Oat? I heard Rudy Ford was flying around. Could be mistaken, but I did see him in the linebacker position a couple times. Rudy Ford, I thought, had played a pretty decent game, too. I think he had one blown coverage. I can't remember who it was against, but um, was there, in the in the opposing player just made a good play. And I mean, I like Rudy Ford, honestly. I mean, a guy that not a lot of people talked about before the before the training camp and the preseason. Um, and I'm and I'm I'm cool with that for sure. Atzert says, uh, Agnew will be like Robinson. The coaches finally figured out that they are our best playmakers. I think you're right. Timmy Devil 999 Brown, Hamilton, and Robert, Roy Robertson Harris, chef's kiss in the run game. <laughs> you're right. You're right, bro. I mean, maybe that's why they brought him in. They're not getting pressure on the interior, so but Josh Allen, step it up. Clavon, step it up. Smoot's been playing, playing well. DJM says, Newton to Seattle is a possibility. I'm not really scared of Cam Newton. Not at all. Looks like the Chiefs need Cam. The Chiefs? 
It's Dervo. Start Cisco. Okay. I don't know. I mean, this team. I there's the thing. I mean, the team is the coaches are starting uh, Rudy Ford and they're starting Andrew Wingard. I mean, they're 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 not like against starting people. Like they're playing the guys that deserve it. And maybe Rudy Ford's just out playing them. Maverick Harden says, "Hey Jaguars United, what's up, Maverick? Good to see you here." Jag all the way says, "Man, where's Andre Cisco? Man, I want to see him." That's a good question. I mean, we Dervo just said the same thing. I I don't know. I, I don't think the coaching staff would like not play him for like any reason. Yeah, I don't know. Maverick I saw, says, I saw your party video. <laughs> that party video will go in the annals of Jaguars United history of one of the greatest videos of all time. If you did not watch the party video, it's the last one on there. You might recognize the thumbnail, Trevor and Urban and party hats. Go watch it. Moon Illusion says he's been playing a little bit, covering opposing backs, talking about Andre Cisco. Timmy Devil says, so don't resign Cam Robinson, and Walker Little is a flop or decent at best. No, we have to retain homegrown talent at some point. That's fair. Um, I think the Jags will probably try to resign him. I, I just, like I said, if, if I'm Cam Robinson's advisor, I'm telling him to test his worth on the market. I, mean, I think someone will just grossly overpay for him. And if you're if you want to do that, if you want to give the guy 14, 15 million dollars a year, do it. I don't know what he's gonna get. All right. Um, are you worried? This is from G. Are you worried of LaVisca Chenault's route running? No, I'm not. I think there's like a little bit give and take there between Trevor being a little late on some of his passing route concepts and with him dropping the ball. Like I said on that, I mean that, I mean, he dropped, he had two consecutive drops and then he had three consecutive catches on plays. That's five consecutive targets to LaVisca Chenault. That drive was all Visca. So, uh, I mean, I'm fine with it. All right, let's look at some more Trevor Lawrence because that's what we do around here. All right. Love the play action. I'm a big fan of play action. Here we're going to have, uh, I mean, this is our third. I mean, we played three tight ends all game. I love it. Dan Arnold here lined up a little little removed from the line of scrimmage. Just enough to make the defense think a little bit. And the defense is going to be in like a, I, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't call it a bare front. But, I mean, they definitely have, you know, three guys within the tackles there. Perfect time to call play action. Horrible block by... <laughs> Horrible block by Marvin Jones on the right side from a blocking DB. But look at this play that Trevor makes. Like, this isn't a play that your average quarterback makes. I'm sorry. Say what you want about Trevor, but you how often – you guys watch football as much as me. How often do you see a quarterback make a play like this? Like, that's you're in the backyard with your boys in middle school – and you're playing two-hand touch, and you just rip off the gnarliest fadeaway throw of your life. And you talk about it all day, all week at school. And the dude does this like it's nothing. He, we picked up the first down there. Sees the pressure. No quarterback is doing this. No quarterback is instinctually doing this and making this throw accurately falling down. <laughs> Boys, you got something special here in Trevor. You got something special here. Don't waste it. I haven't missed a Trevor Lawrence home game yet because, dude, this is these, these dudes generational. All right? How about this? You can't really see pre-snap. Miami does a horrible job disguising this cover, too. Look, if you want to try to make... If you want to try to convince me that they played a cover six, some sort of invert where they're going half, half, quarters here, or quarter, quarter, half, get out of here. Horrible job disguising their cover one. Pre-snap, safety rolls down late. Trevor's looking right at them. He says, okay. <laughs> you boys want to do that soft-ass cover one? <laughs> Guess where I'm going? I'm going to Marvin. Yeah, let's see you play this one-on-one, -on -one, boys. Touchdown. All day. Easy. Reads the coverage. He sees the roll. Look, if, if the Dolphins were truly in a cover two, there's a chance this guy could have gotten here. But since he's weaved to the middle of the field... Touchdown. See you, boys. Give one to Marvin. Give one to him.
Y'all better appreciate who we got here, man. Better buy his jersey. Splint, Splinter Cell Allen says, Cisco the Dragon. Okay. All right. Moon Illusion says, falling across his body backwards. <laughs> the whole thing, man. Tuggernut. Trevor is insane, LOL. He can really make any type of throw. Bro, you can have the no-look Patrick Mahomes throw. I'll give you that. You want that? Take it. You want the sidearm release? Sweet. You can have that, too. I want the dude that's falling away. That's literally Michael Jordan fadeaway throwing the ball accurately to the flat. That's who I want. That's who I want, for sure. And look, you want to talk about everything else? That's fine. I mean, whatever. I mean, it was clearly Keyshawn Johnson had done absolutely no research on on him at all. Like, none. Like, probably hadn't watched a single game. Maybe watched a couple clips. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um, Maverick Harden says, let's go win the rest of the games and make the playoffs, LOL. Hey, okay. okay. Uh, Timmy says, pay homegrown talent. Stop letting guys walk. Look, I'm all about that, too. I don't want to let guys walk either. But you don't want to, like sink your salary cap into a guy you're not sure about I, I, that's my only reservation like i get the argument we've seen so many good guys walk but i just don't know if cam robinson's the guy i want to like dig my heels in on that you know what i mean like jalen ramsey yeah and gawkway i probably would have too but i don't i don't know if cam robinson's that guy I, I i just don't i mean he's good but he's been very very inconsistent uh the last couple of years he's been very injured i mean he's one serious injury away from being like not even a thought on this team just something to think about. I hope it doesn't happen, but just just food for thought. Jag all the way says we may be one of the worst teams, but we have one of the best communities. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. We got the we got the Jaguars United Jaguar fans community. If this is your first show, um, I mean the subscribers are growing by the day. I mean every day I I refresh it. There's more subscribers. There's more views, and that's all a testament to you guys. Um, we're all about the Jags fans here. Um, that's that's what we do. All right, I, I want to show you a play that's that's been close been close to my heart all day. Okay, this is one of my favorite plays. All right. Okay. <laughs> you may notice in the bottom left hand corner of the screen when I have in my mouse the name of my play that I because I mean I have to name it so I know what they are. This one's named Smoot DB. Yes, you read that correctly, Smoot DB. Okay, so this is. At the end of the, uh, this is the end of the half, okay? The end of the half. The Dolphins have the ball. They're trying to get in field goal range to maybe kick a cheeky field goal. Can't can't blame them. But like, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, like, this seems like a pretty standard prevent defense, right? Like, you got guys all over the field. Looks like three deep. Um, one guy rushing at least to put a little bit of pressure on it. And then, like, something catches my eye. Big number 91 stating right here, right? Like like, like he's not supposed to be on the field or like he <laughs> ran on late. Okay, big number 91 standing right here. Okay. Please, please watch his footwork. <laughs> please watch his footwork here. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Just watch this. Yeah, like he's like he's a little high. He's a little high in his shuffle, right? As a DB, we call this the shuffle, right? <laughs> you shuffle out. He's a little high there. Okay, got his eyes on the quarterback. Got his letting the route unfold. He knows his responsibility is the flat right here. His job is to try to keep the, the guy from catching it and going out of bounds quickly, right? He's gonna stand right here. Look at this. Shuffles ten yards out. Realizes the pass that's gonna happen. Plants that. Foot like he's doing a W drill, gets upfield, pass breakup. <laughs> PBU for my boy Dewan Smoot. Not only can he deliver babies at home, which is absolutely incredible, my guy is playing defensive back. Someone clip this and send it to Smoot. I saw this Smoot. This is the type of play that this is the type of play that the coaches show in the film room over and over and over again. My boy, look at that. Watch this. Watch him plant his right foot in the dirt. Bam! Get out of here. Look at him celebrating. Look at him. <laughs> Woo! Go get you one, Smooty. Go get you one. Man, I gained a lot of respect for him after that play. Pokey443 says, hello, everyone. Hello, Pokey. DJM says, I'm glad the Trevor Doubters have stopped. 
It is uh, winning cures everything, man. Winning cures everything. I mean, we we had so many plays that like I don't necessarily think were great last game against the Dolphins. Like I said, a good team probably would have beat us. Uh, we had a lot of mistakes in that game, especially in the first half. Um, but at the same time, a win is a win, and winning cures everything. And any given Sunday, you never know what's going to happen. The Jets beat the Titans, and the Titans beat the Bills, the transit of property, whatever, right? So you never know. Any given Sunday, anything can happen. Um, just glad that we have a franchise generational quarterback. Uh, Doc 5K says, It's so hard to find good players in the NFL. I would sign Robinson. He's good enough to start and focus on bigger issues. I would rather let Taylor go and move little to right tackle. I heard them talking about on the local radio today about how the coaches aren't weren't stoked about Walker Little's play at right tackle. I don't know how much validity there is there, so I can't really comment on it. I do know they tried to put him there, and that we haven't seen him yet. Walker Little is kind of a mystery right now. And like, look, I always say the offensive lineman, it takes them a year to adjust to the NFL speed. It's the hard, one of the hardest positions to play in the NFL outside of quarterback. I mean, you, you think about how the defensive linemen are huge, they're fast, they're technical, they're good with their hands, they're, they have different moves, and you're a Pac-12 offensive lineman who's used to playing in space versus undersized DNs and D tackles. So there, there's an adjustment for sure, even for a guy like Walker Little who's – supposedly technically sound but give him a year i mean look we saw robinson took a lot some time to develop right i think taylor's still developing i think like that's one of those positions you can't just plug in a rookie it rarely rarely works out that way but um look it, it, that's why the second contract for the offensive lineman is, is huge Tuggernut says, Smoot got to him before the linebacker did. I'm telling you, bro. I'm going to clip that and send it to Smoot and be like, bro, I see you. He might be a little busy with his baby and all that, but um, come on, bro. You got to give my man credit for that. Jack, all the way, as an 11-year-old and watching UCF and United, I'm proud. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I can entertain the 11 year Hey, look, that's – you know what I call that? I call that uh, – uh, 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 Talent flexibility. I don't, know, that's not good. I don't know. DJM says Bart seemed to improve after year one. That's true. That's true. Azert, who doubted T Law? Who only lost four games since high school? He's a rook. I mean, there was doubters, um, but it's mainly the people that are just like fed up with losing, and they're just like every time something bad happens, it's like hellfire and brimstone. Look, I say this all the time. Jags fans, there's a lot of Jags fans out there. Not us. There's a lot of Jags fans out there that kind of enjoy the sympathy. They kind of like being like the woe is me, my team's never good, I support a bad. There's some guys out there that like that. That's not me. So they're going to pop up on Twitter. They're going to pop up all over the place, but they like the attention. They like Even if it's negative attention, it's just that's how some people are. Every fan base has them, not just the Jags fans. But, look, you're going to have people out there that doubt everyone because they like the negative attention. It, it sucks. It's, it's more of a social science, I guess. But, yeah, I don't know. Let's... We've gotten we've gotten very off track there. All right, let's see here. Um, we got to go to the offense. Sorry, I know this isn't great. I think we already saw this play. All right, this one we have not seen. All right, so here we're gonna have Trevor Lawrence with another throw. You know me and Trevor Lawrence. We're buddies. If you didn't know, ten personnel. Uh, we'll call us eleven. Tied in here. Tight formation. This is this play is going to show Trevor Lawrence's ability to throw his receivers open, right? Because some people are talking about Trevor's accuracy, and he he's had he's struggled with some accuracy times here here and there. But um, this play is kind of going to show like what he can do. The ball snapped, and these safeties are still talking to each other. So. That's not good. I mean, that's I, I hate blaming coaches. I mean, this guy's still sta literally standing straight up. These guys just aren't ready pre-snap. Like, I would have a big problem with this in the film room. They realize what's happening. They don't know what coverage they're in. They end up rolling to a cover three late. Um, this guy doesn't really know what his responsibility is. I guess he's playing like a – I guess he's helping here, pattern matching this slot here. Um, but what that's going to end up doing, that's going to open up the middle of the field. For Marvin Jones Jr. Linebacker's going to pick wrong. 43 is going to going to respond late. I mean, 
they didn't know what they were doing, right? Like this safety should have been right here in the middle of the field and right in this passing lane. Trevor sees it. He knows he's not going to be able to lead Marvin Jones into this safety. So he throws it behind him right in the gap there. I mean, watch this throw. Beautiful. Marvin thought he was going to get lit up. He didn't, which is good. But like, again, that's a pro level throw right there. Not to mention there's a guy, you know, rushing at him. Is that who was just talking about Ben Barch? Your boy Ben Barch just got put on skates right there. He slipped. Okay, people slip. It happens, especially in London. Oh, and he got. Oh, that was a good little defensive play there. Watch fifty five here. Give Barch the little shove there. Oh man, that's a good little blitz there. But good blitz didn't matter. Trevor makes the throw. Bing bang. There we go. Not a problem for Trevor. Those negative people need a card. <laughs> they might have too much of a card might be the problem. I don't know. Uh, DJM, sheesh, we should put Smoot as cornerback instead of Claybrooks. <laughs> uh, Moon says, Jawan always has such an early step on the snap. It's funny seeing opposing fans wanting penalties called on him when it happens. That's a very positive spin on Jawan Taylor, who people have not been happy with. Uh, you're right, though. He does have a quick reaction at the snap. I mean, that's good. All right, let's see what else we got here. I mean, we're almost... Uh... Okay, I like this one here. So one thing I really like about Trevor is that um, he's not afraid to throw those back shoulder passes, right? You know, someone who also was not afraid to throw those back shoulder passes was Blake Bortles. I mean... <laughs> Blake Bortles, for all the things he was and all the things that he wasn't, he was not afraid to throw the back shoulder pass. And there almost is an art to it. And I got a lot. I got to admit to you, like Blake got away with a lot of things and was able to move the ball a lot because he would have these like back shoulder throws almost locked in. It's good to see Trevor be able to throw these. We're gonna see from the end zone here. I mean, Marvin Jones had himself a game. I mean, that's a pretty, I mean, you have to be on the same page. I don't have the sideline view of this, but you have to be on the same page to be able to hang in there and throw a perfect back shoulder. I mean, look where that ball, I mean, that ball's 25, 30 yards down the field on an exact spot that him and Marvin Jones know that it's going. I mean, the previous play and the previous drive, Trevor threw him deep. And they scored a touchdown on beating the cover one on that vertical. When you're a DB, you're like, okay, I can't give that up. And then look what happens. They hit you with this. Great toe tap there. Ooh. Ooh, that toe tap. That toe tap, boys. Marvin Jones is the real deal, man. Marvin Jones is the real freaking deal. Let's hit another one here. I don't think we have seen this one yet. James Robinson, my boy, who does not get enough love and respect in the national media. I think he's starting to now. Jaguars in their heavy set. Trevor under center. What I like is that they're actually starting to run the ball out of this so the play action opens up. I mean, how many play actions did Trevor hit last in this game because the Dolphins were so scared of the run? Dolphins see this look. They see two tight ends in the game. They think, all right, you're gonna have to, if you're going to beat us, in, you're going to have to beat us through the air. I mean, one, this is, this is, this is every player. This is nine players in, in the box right here. If we're going to beat them, we're going to have to throw it. Like I'm okay with loading the box because if we can block it up, we're fine. Vision. This is all vision right here. This play is designed to probably hit about right here. Maybe here. I don't know, but the inside zone turns into the outside zone. The corner does a horrible job keeping outside leverage. This corner here should have stayed right here, but he thought the play was flowing that way. I mean, this is your classic vision. I mean, look how quickly James Robinson gets his right foot in the dirt and hits the outside. That's what makes James Robinson special. He's able to survey the field, see what's happening, get a burst of speed, get to the outside, and just make a play. I love the fact that he doesn't just jog out of bounds like a 
you know what. He wants all that. He wants all that, man. I love it, man. I love it. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get one more in here before YouTube shuts us out. We've gone long enough, so if they shut me down, whatever. We've gone a whole hour. Here, we're, uh, we're not going to get a catch, unfortunately. There's going to be a drop. But it is it does show how Trevor can make something out of nothing, and he feels the pressure. Like I said, the Tom Brady, Joe Montana-esque feel the pressure. You know me. I'm a big trips right bunch guy. Trips left bunch, I'm cool with that too. But I like the trips right bunch because it gives the quarterback the option to roll out here, right? Backside tight ends, going to be lined up tight. Defense doesn't really know how to cover this. I mean, it's a little confusing here. I mean, that's a good route concept. Oh, catch the ball, Visca. What a route concept, though. The curl from Marvin, the out from Visca. I mean, you can't draw that play up any better. Yeah, the ball should have been higher. Yeah, the ball should have been at his numbers. But I think even LaVisca will tell you who should have caught that. Good good concept. For all the crap about Bevel, uh, you can't draw it up much better than that. I thought Bevel actually called a pretty good game, in my opinion. You know, I think he did. Even in the red zone. He was able to score in the red zone. I don't know. Mur... Taza Zadi says Brady has Gronk, Mahomes has Kelsey, T Law has his. T Law needs his go to tight end. Maybe trade for Kittle, keeping his April Fool's post in mind. I'd be cool with Kittle. I'd be fine with that. Um, been injured the last couple of years, but good player. Definitely. I don't think anyone would complain about that. DJM, can we officially give Trevor the title as the best quarterback in the AFC South? Yeah. Daniel sucks. Doesn't suck. He actually played pretty well, I thought, the other night on Monday. <laughs> he actually played pretty well on Monday, but not Trevor Lawrence is going to be better. Deshaun Watson's good. Is he a AFC South quarterback anymore? I don't know. Carson Wentz, trash can. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Another drop. Oof. Yeah, I know. Hey, man, that's how it goes. Um, but look, we got to win. We are on the board. We're on a winning streak, even. Um, let's keep it going. We got a bye week. Get Miles Jack healthy. Get some of your other get uh, get uh, Campbell healthy. Um, let's go. Get your line healthy. Let's get another win. Let's keep it rolling. There's no reason why they can't. Let's stack some wins together. I mean, this win was huge for so many people. It was huge for Josh Allen. It was huge for Trevor Lawrence. It was huge for Cam Robinson. These guys that have been here and these guys that have been putting in the work for two years and have not seen a winning result. It was huge for them. Huge. So excited to see it. I think we're only going to see better things to come from here on out. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you appreciated the film breakdown. We made it through the whole breakdown without Trevor, without <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, without YouTube shutting us down. So I count that as a win. If you got here late, go back and watch some of the film clips that we showed earlier. It was a good, fun breakdown. If you did not watch the Jaguars party episode, got to make sure you do. Go back and check out the party episode. We partied hard on that episode celebrating the first win of the season first of many to come though look i gotta say thank you guys that were here um this is way more fun when there's chat involvement there's people like you guys in the chat giving your comments look I, I've, I've been doing my the work is flux right now so i got some time right now i'll be pumping out the live shows so make sure you subscribe uh to make sure you get notifications when we go live i usually do two during the week um then i try to do one on the weekends but you know how it is Thank you guys for being here. Uh, you guys are so awesome. I'm going to leave the chat open for a little bit if you guys want to talk Jags. I know you guys like to argue about God knows what in the chat, but feel free to hang out. Thank you guys for supporting so much. You guys are awesome. And as always, go Jags.